Hello, Cielo and Niklas. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hi, good. Hi, Very we're good. doing fine. Yes. Excited to, have... to be here. Yeah, it's the first time I do an interview where I have two people in one screen and me a little bit to the other side. So for everyone who is watching this on YouTube or everywhere else, it's a special occasion and a special team. So looking forward to learn more of what you guys are doing. But before we go into chocolate and innovating the world, how people can experience chocolate, let's talk a little bit about you as individuals and together. Let's start with Celio. I'm pronouncing the name most probably 10,000 times wrong. So That's sorry for that. Sorry, sorry for every Argentine out there. Let's start with you. So who are you and how did you get to where you are today? Yes, as you already well introduced, I come from Argentina. It was my dream to come to Europe to study and then life took me to stay here. I'm a food engineer as a background and I'm really, really passionate about innovation and especially food innovation. Nicholas, fellow German. <laughs> yes, fellow Spoiler. German. Yeah, exactly. A connecting factor. So uh, me, how did I end up here? So um, yeah, I'm German and uh, that's also where Cielo and I met. I went for studies to the Netherlands, but now I'm always already for 10 plus years. I'm in, in chocolate, working for some of the big names in chocolate, currently working for Mars. So everybody has had at one point in the time, one of the products in their hands. And um, yes, that's me. Chocolate. Let's start wider before we go into the interesting, innovative stuff you, you do. So how did you get into chocolate? I got into chocolate through working for one of the giants, so Mondelez International at that time, and I couldn't fall in love more with chocolate. I think chocolate is so close to people and to happiness, right? Whenever you hit sun, you want to have chocolate. So that's where the journey started in 2014 when I started working in England. Yeah. And since then, uh, I've worked in different types of food products as well, but chocolate is super close to my heart. As a food engineer, food, not food, <laughs> food <laughs> engineer, yeah, that's, that's the German English. So food, as a food engineer, what is special when you produce and think about chocolate than other products? Yeah, I think it's thinking about the moment when chocolate will be enjoyed by people. And there, for me, what I love is then designing chocolates and products that people are going to love and enjoy. So that's, that's the part that, let's say, sparks in me. And it's the most fun part, actually, the whole part of, of the tasting and enjoying the chocolate experience. T tell me more about designing. How can you design chocolate? The world of chocolate is immense, and especially uh, there are so many possibilities in how you can play with ingredients, with different flavors. Um, there, really, there are limited combinations you could do to the most crazy stuff. And both Nicholas and I have tried a lot of things in chocolate, some which maybe you would never thought, mm, would this really go well? Well, we've, we've tried a lot of that. Um, so I think the creativity comes a lot for us in the, let's say, flavor or the taste experience. But it could also, of course, come in when you come to chocolate, thinking about the thickness of the bar, because that's how it fits in your mouth so that the whole uh, experience is better. So there, there's a lot around the world of, of creating a chocolate uh, for people. Yeah, and for me, it's also, if I consider it, it's really what's happening in chocolate. So everybody, the high emotional aspect of it, right? Everybody still knows when they got their first chocolate piece or their first confectionery from grandma, grandpa or the parents. And chocolate is whenever you talk about it, everybody is lightening up a little bit more, right? And uh, you're just at a party, you're just at a get together and everybody's talking about what they're doing. And the moment you're bringing up that you work in or with chocolate, it's, it's a door opener and everybody is super excited to just learn more and know more. Um, even though it's such a day-to-day -day, um, product we are always having, um, there is so little people actually know about. And that's extremely exciting and obviously to share this and once you are in there and then also on the other side on the professional producing, changing, designing things, then people always want to know how the world uh, as Willy Wonka actually is, right? And that's it, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that. I still remember when we met first time in person, where you told me a similar story. 
I mean, if I'm telling someone, hey, I, I help corporates in innovating, it's like, yeah, okay, boring. Let's, let, let's talk about beer or something. You mentioned chocolate and everyone's like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And everybody has an opinion. That's is also, it's, it's so nice, right? And everybody has a feeling to it. And everybody has heard something um, about good and bad things or has a, a favorite flavor or has a favorite brand all of this and uh, there's always something to share and the nice thing is on a lot of aspects there is no right or wrong there's just preferences and that's uh, super good to talk about yeah before we go further into chocolate how did you find each other yeah. for us it was study so we both had the background in in food technology food engineering meaning how do you produce food in a in a, a great scale right um, and then we met together here in the Netherlands during studies. And then actually our path, yeah, kind of, we, we drifted apart a little bit and everybody was living in different countries, as Cielo mentioned already being in the UK, or I was in France or Germany or here in the Netherlands. And then fate brought us together and where we are right now living in the same city in Utrecht here in the Netherlands. And there we then connected again. And also the bad times around COVID brought some good aspects to it as well, because you spend way more time together and then have time to think on what do you want to do else um, outside of what you're currently doing and rethinking certain things. And that's how we discussed more about ambitions as well. That's what has brought us together. Maybe you have something to add, could be. No, no, that's, I think you explained really well, but I think for us, well, brought, well, we became friends, which of course is really important. I think that's foremost, uh, yes, yes. And, uh, for us, the most important to, yeah, in starting this journey was to just have fun, have fun together and do, um, what we really dreamt of, um, uh, that, you know, started shaping together, as Nicola said, uh, in 2020, and then continue all the way to take us to where we are today. Yeah. How was it in the beginning? Was it straight away, let's do something around chocolate or was it, hey, let's test different things? I think it was very straightforward that, of course, it needed to be something in the line of food because that's where we come from. Um, for myself, I'm working for such a long time in chocolate already. Cielo has that background as well. And it's always this innovative and, and R&D aspect to it. And we wanted to just create our own. So it was very very early on and very quickly narrowed down to, yeah, but we want to work in chocolate. We want to create something there. Yes. Yeah. I think that was, that was undoubtedly one of the first aspects. Yeah. And I think it comes together when, when you start thinking, okay, I really want to do something of my own. You also normally need to pair it with, okay, what do you know more or less how to do well? Right. And then that's where for us, you know, both things led to, to it being uh, chocolate. What, um, yes, changed a lot along the way. It's, of course, our idea and how it came to be, let's say, the products we've launched today, you know, that has transformed and shifted into very different directions as, as we went through this kind of creative journey together of, of finding yeah. what was the right thing to, to finally, you know, launch a product. I think as well, it's very interesting to know or to experience then how a vague idea you maybe have uh, is then crystallizing more and more, right? And then yeah. you need to make it almost bulletproof or waterproof. You're, you're checking certain things. I always had the idea I maybe wanted to do A. And once you're going a little bit closer to it or narrow it down, you're realizing, ah, but it's not as feasible. Or in reality, it maybe doesn't look as appealing to me anymore. And maybe I want to do something else or something different. Um, and really to check this, uh, I think that's very a nice one. And then also sometimes a scary exercise to do because it's always nice to have a dream. And all of a sudden you make this dream into reality. Um, and that, that is on both sides. Yes. Very cool. I want to go back later into backtracking from today towards 2020, when you started out and how you got to where you are today. But before we do that, let's talk about traveling. There's one tagline on your website, which says Choc and Choc is the dream of two friends extremely passionate about chocolate and traveling. How does traveling fit into the picture? So it has to do on how we met. So when Niklas and I met through our studies, we lived uh, actually in five different countries within two years. So we were moving a lot along and uh, we, we love that. We 
I think we've both always been very passionate about traveling, about discovering. I think the part of traveling that's more interesting is really the part of discovering new cultures, right? Discovering uh, new people, but also for us, we are foodies. So what are the foods around the world? What, what are those flavors, those aromas and those adventures that they are out there? Um, and uh, yeah, I have to say we are uh, very privileged and lucky to be able to today, you know, travel pretty much anywhere around the world and, and go and, and explore, you know, go always for, for more and for the unknown. Yeah, I think the traveling aspect and also um, once you have then friends, eh, if as Cielo says, we are lucky enough to have this once you have friends all over the world. It's a it's a bittersweet thing. So number one is, you know, you have somewhere a home or somebody close to you at the other side of the world. But at the same time, and I think a lot of people experience this, they seem so far away. And still the traveling is that one aspect, because I think we all can agree a real face to face, a real life meeting um, is comparable to nothing else. And we all experience this also during COVID and the pandemic. But I think that whole traveling aspect to always be in mind of, yeah, I could travel somewhere else. I could visit some friends, I can meet them. And uh, that's always nice uh, to experience also the other cultures there. And that was really a binding character for the two of us. Yeah. yeah. I can't agree more with the food things because food is connecting you to different cultures and different countries. I've lived in six countries until today. And of course, the food was always different. I'm grown up in Germany like Nicholas, but I've lived in Russia. The food was different than it was in Denmark or in Sweden or in Spain or now in the Netherlands. There's always something different. And for sure, when it comes to chocolate, even more because it's very specific. I can tell you from a beer perspective, it's definitely different. <laughs> <laughs> and I think food tells so much about the culture in itself. Uh, yeah. the, the things people do around food, it's almost like a ceremony, right? It's uh, the things people eat, how they celebrate it, talking about different cultures when they eat, right? The moment eh, when Cielo and I, when we are together, it's always I rather want to eat earlier in Cielo in the, in the Latin American kind of way, rather late. So that already tells something. What kind of ingredients are we using for cooking? These kind of aspects. And they are so different, but again, eh, and I think that's a nice combination. It's, there is no right or wrong. It's just different in preferences and how you learned it and how you maybe um, yeah, learned it later on as well. Exactly how I said with chocolate. And then you have a discussion. And uh, let's be honest, then we eat somewhere at a decent time between the two times we're preferring them, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think there's one more element about food, which is super interesting. And I think the nicest as well is that it's actually connection, right? It connects people. It's the moment of bringing people together, friends, family, having fun, sharing. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what's the, the super nice part about it. Yeah, exactly. The sharing aspect. And I think that's where you talk about your day. That's where you talk about what you did or what you're going to do. And uh, so that aspect is, yeah, is super close to also uh, what we say in terms of we were sharing our passion we have. Um, and that's, that's, I think where this traveling aspect together with the food aspect really resonates with us. Yeah. So before we go into 2020. Sirio, how is it working with the German? <laughs> amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's really good, I have to say. Um, Niklas, is, of course, brings a lot of structure and amazing organization. Also, he personally is a lover of ex advice. So, you know, a, a lot of our stuff, it's nailed there, uh, which it's, it's great. So I, I have to say Thank I you. got used to that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I always laugh about that as well, because we Germans, and I've seen this meeting Germans around the world, we have this structural element is in every, everyone, some a, a little bit further, some a little bit less, but still compared to other cultures, specifically more Southern cultures, the, the German have it in their DNA. <laughs> yes. Good. Yes. Let, let's, let's go to 2020. So what was the starting point where you both sat next to each other, let's try, let's do this. Yeah, so I think it started first to bring a bit of background. So we were both before 2020, I think that two years before traveling massively, both for work because of our roles there in uh, big FMCGs, but also for personal reasons, because as we were saying, we, we love traveling. So it was always uh, for us, 
getting together, even having to plan it, you know, okay, when are we both in Utrecht and can we meet? Um, and 2020, when, uh, when COVID hit, really, of course, changed, uh, well, everyone's lives and also ours, and brought the time for then us to be together more often. We, uh, as being close friends, let's say, became this kind of the COVID group. You know, you had to choose your small group of friends or family to meet. And um, for us, that was it. And that was kind of mm -hmm. kind of intense as well, right? Let's be honest. So beforehand, as we we like each other, are good friends, but then you you were used to not seeing each other for long long stretches, and uh, you still stayed in contact. And all of a sudden, you see each other three four times a week, uh, having dinner together, yeah, and then discussing things. And also, I think that that whole aspect of really being forced to be slowed down. We all experienced it because the world was all of a sudden turning so slow for good and bad effects. And I think rather quickly re experience then let's use this good momentum of it to, to reconsider on certain things. Okay, what do you want to do? Um, thinking about well, what do you maybe want to achieve in other aspects and then really realizing um, yeah, your own things, your own projects and just taking a knee, taking a pause and uh, re-evaluating some things and that's really where we then came up with all right um put your money where your mouth is right and uh, you want to talk about it you want to do something like this then uh, then go ahead and maybe do it now right so was it like you i i there there are always different moments was it dr during celebrating a chocolate or was it during getting drunk or was it kind of really strategic Hey, let's, it was let, a how, really how was strategic that? choice over beer. Let's call it like this. <laughs> now, there, was, there was a beer or wine involved uh, over multiple evenings of discussing it, I think, as well, of was, being more free. Yeah, Yeah, really sitting in the couch, you know, before watching a movie together or something, just, yeah, chatting over a beer. And that's how it all came together. Yeah, I still remember how, so it was now watching a movie or just having food and then talking about it. And uh, you're just dropping this idea of yeah okay what does it mean now this new situation of COVID, and then just being more free in your mind and uh, based on this that wasn't a close discussion on one evening but then it kept on going because i think that was really the benefit you could kind of connect these thoughts the one evening you have done this already the next day or the day after where in real life before COVID, it would have taken two months three months before we see each other again, right? Yeah. And like this, it was really a, a, a boost of bringing these ideas up and these actually desires or requirements from ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. What was the first idea when you said, okay, let's do something together. It's chocolate. What was the first idea? The first idea was, I think it came with, uh, the subscription model so i think it was a bit related with COVID. we know we were all at home and we're like yeah. hey we need something that excites us <laughs> we need something and i'm sure everyone is waiting for this so it came how could we bring something to people's home in form of a surprise to say like wow i've got a treat for me so i think that's the first starter which came with the idea no yeah and it was also realizing that um exactly how cielo is saying the excitement I mean, everybody had watched so much Netflix already. So any evening that is different to being at home watching Netflix or being at home and reading the third book, uh, anything that is different to this um, was already warmly welcomed. And therefore, I think uh, that was really the, the trigger as well of this box of bringing the excitement to people and they could be surprised. And it's actually feasible. And at that time, you also nobody knew how long will this crazy time last. Yeah. The interesting yeah. thing is when we chatted before, you said we really dive deep into the product, which you, of course, do. But you discussed the business model straight away in the early stages because the subscription model is basically the revenue and the business model of how do you put the things in front of people or the chocolate in front of people. It's quite yeah. interesting. Yeah, there are nice aspects to it. So I think our background coming from the really hands on, OK, how do you create a product? that was rather clear for us on how to do it. So how is then the angle to it and how do we get behind it? So, and that would have been, or is still the subscription model or is then also the connection to a travel. I think that is a, that is a nice angle. And for us that still works. And it was very early on. I also still remember is where we discussed, okay, why are we doing this? So, and that's where this came from that we are saying we want to share our passion for it because we said, 
it's it's that is the main motivator for us to do it is really we are loving chocolate we are loving this thing we are experiencing it in every day to day life as said at a party to talk about you you get so much in return almost and emotions let's do this on a bigger scale and that was really the driver for it let's talk about the product you're selling right now and then we go back to starting from we have this idea subscription so what is the product you're selling today so we are selling a new chocolate experience so it's a choco box inspired by traveling so this idea is you get this box you open it and you immerse yourself into going somewhere around the world through chocolate so we develop uh, chocolate tablets inspired by the food culture of this country we want to take you to and i think the unique point to it is that we develop really the recipes for the chocolate as we said that's our background and that's where also our passion came from right in researching or in innovating there and uh, we are developing these flavors really in accordance to that country and it's not necessarily where the chocolate the cocoa comes from but really we want to travel somewhere we refine the destination and then um, basically how can we encapsulate that food these flavors into the culture into the chocolate and uh, then ideally ship it in nice neat tablets and nice neat bars to your door that you can experience it and then not only stopping there because we also realize it's not only the chocolate and the food that conveys a culture but there is way more so there is music to it there is maybe some artistic aspect to it and to really bring all of these things also in yeah G give me the example of i think it was argentinian box the first one right well, what a coincidence eh? that it's argentinian <laughs> i mean sitting together with an argentinian one but uh, i think um it's a little bit more difficult to bring the German box on the market with yeah. direct German flavors, but uh, challenge accepted for the future. Eh? It's then including bratwurst and beer or yeah. whatever. Bratwurst and beer, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's go deeper. So there's a box that comes to me as the person that has subscribed to your service who wants to get a box every month or in different cycles. And it's the Argentinian box. What is it to open the box? What is it? What is inside? Yeah, so you open it and you immediately feel, wow, this is a treat for me. And inside you find the three or six chocolate tablets, three different flavors, really inspired by the Argentinian food culture. Here we were actually quite adventurous with some of the ingredients, really developing also recipes that let's say are balanced and pretty much most of the audience would like. Within the box, you also would have a box guide, and that includes a tasting journey. So a little bit of the explanation, which notes, which flavors do you expect to find as you, as you taste the different bars, but also a full immersion into Argentina, so in telling you a little bit about the country, but also you have a playlist covering a bit of different genres of music. And we collaborated with a photographer from Patagonia, and you receive that in the form of a postcard. So it's one of her beautiful postcards that also come in the box. And lastly, there's also a pairing with Sherba Mate. That's uh, something so embedded in the Argentinian culture. So it's some sort of tea. It's not really tea, but you could think it's a such. And we really would like to invite everyone to, to give it a try. Yeah. So it's not just the chocolate, like, hey, I'm, I'm ordering chocolate at Amazon. I even don't know if you can order chocolate at Amazon, but everyone knows how that works. There's a, there's, there's a person coming at your door ringing and throwing it into your hands, <laughs> which might be still the same, at least that part of the experience. But the, the other part is different where you bring people along through the tasting guide in experience the chocolate in a completely different way than you would do because you can't buy the chocolates with the flavors and tastes profiles in a normal store you can't buy them in a normal store this is extraordinary only done for this specific box right exactly we're creating them directly for these and it's about the experience and it's it's all coming from the point of do you want to eat quickly chocolate before you go to your on your bike and you bike to your next appointment or to your to sports 
which a lot of times that's the occasion where people also eat chocolate, um, sometimes a little bit mindlessly, which is, uh, we've all fallen for that one. But for us, it's more that aspect, take your time, take your moment, uh, take these five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of rest and experiencing your moment and having then your tea, having it with the music, um, reading about the chocolate, reading where it comes from. And it's all really put together for that experience. And also what do you taste at what time? So really you put that piece of chocolate in your mouth and how does it melt? What are the certain peaks of different flavors that are coming? And that I think really excites people as well. And the nice aspect is people know this already. So it's not so strange. We know this for wine, definitely. We know this also for coffee, definitely. That's where it gets more and more. So people know this and beer is the same, right? Different notes are coming through at different times. And uh, for chocolate, it's growing more and more, and it's a big market, of course. But uh, it's also that people appreciate it way more and more, uh, that they get really dragged into that area of it's a really full world of chocolate, what you can experience there, of different flavors. It's not only everything, the same milk chocolate. No, there is so much out there. Yeah. 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 So how, how can I see that as a customer? So I'm most probably going to your website. And then I can select the Argentinian box and other boxes from different countries. How does that work? Yeah, ideally we have then multiple, multiple boxes. Uh, currently we basically offer one box. That's our first one, the starting box. We yeah. have the next ideas already ready and we know what we want to produce and where we are going to continue further. And then in the future, it would literally be you order that one box or the other box. Or in the future, it would also be, it would rather be the surprise. You don't know which box is coming next. And we are surprising you with something new, with a new flavor where you're going to travel to. Yeah. So I'm, I'm subscriber. I want to subscribe. How do I get a box every week, every month? What is the cycle at least right now? What are the things you, you're looking into, to, at least into your offer? For the people who are already exciting, you can go to the website. It's down below this episode, wherever you see that. Have a look at it. It's definitely worth it. <laughs> so far, you can buy a one-off because we wanted to invite people to taste this one, right? And also get feedback because uh, as important as you know, it is in startups, that's what we like to do, right? Launch something yeah. and keep modifying it, trying improving it as we go. So that's why now we've launched as one of the first edition, which is inspired discovering Argentina. We are discussing how we launch now the subscription and that we are looking at a frequency of every four months. Hmm. So every four months I get a new box, this from an yeah. idea perspective, except the demand is so high that you, people want to have it every day and they will. Uh, then, then we could obviously think about something else. Hey, when <laughs> that demand is there, then hey, yes, we're talking about different things then obviously. Uh, no, I, I understand it. That's it, it, important to mention for, for the listeners as well, you are a startup. You're doing this next to your corporate jobs where you work with the like the biggest companies in these industries um, and doing kind of the high value experience version specifically right now for Argentinian taste and flavor and having this experience. But of course, there are, the future is open. I mean, it's, if the demand after this podcast, of course, <laughs> Go, goes up 10x or whatever um there, there are great. possibilities <laughs> there are definitely possibilities always to to scale up and we would be extremely happy right so yeah. already the responses we've received and i think everybody who does a startup and everybody who is so invested uh, with a passion in there once you really put this piece out there and say and decide all right now we're communicating it to people I think that is really such a crucial and great moment. And when you then get your first feedback, uh, that is amazing. And that is, uh, luckily for us, it's it's mainly positive feedback, but also when you sometimes hear something else, hey, but you could have worked on this or you can do that. That's so great to receive and, um, and really coming to the point of, yeah, people were really invested in it. They really thought about it and they spend their time of giving me some feedback. That is so valuable. And it's so great. And uh, yeah, therefore that's, that's for me right now, really a big driver. And therefore if we are 10 Xing it, amazing, right? <laughs> Maybe even hundred Xing, but let's see. 
Yeah, it, because I have tasted the chocolate. I have not gotten a full package, um, but I can tell to, everyone who is... You need to change this. You need to get the full package. <laughs> I mean, no, what but, were we thinking? That you, had, well, you got a personalized tasting with one of the co-founders, right? Yeah. So exactly. I think that, uh, that has a certain value, <laughs> I would say. That, that's, a, that, that's a very, very special deal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, let's, let's go back. So what I love about this, the, the whole experience aspect, of course, for, for, for those who, who don't believe it, but you guys are professional chocolate makers. Like you are not a startup starting from, hey, let's do something and put something together. You know what you're doing when it comes to the chocolate itself. What is super interesting for me that you think about the other elements as well, not just how can we make Argentinian chocolates in six different flavors or three different flavors. I think I got three at least. Yeah, um, yeah. Let, let's talk about how did you come up with the idea of the tasting guide? I think that the issue was where we came from and where we thought that really can add value is also when you're discussing with a lot of people, the question most of them have is, what is your favorite chocolate, right? And my answer most of the time is, if you find a chocolate that's kind of well done, and let's be honest, you know this already, then find the one you like the most. And then that's your favorite chocolate and that's the best chocolate there is. But there are certain parameters and certain things you can consider. And that is, where does the chocolate come from, right? What are the conditions? How is it produced? Are the ingredients good? That's always in food the case. If you use good ingredients, it's very likely that you're making a good product and a good meal. And that's the same there. And then we then really thought, apparently for us it is, since we're working so long with this already, that is super much the status quo but so many people don't know it yet or really want to learn more and that's where we thought that's a great angle to share and then to really share on how can you taste chocolate and what can you uh, experience there and it's not only sweet or bitter no there is so so much more and i think that was really a good angle to do this and then to combine even more information in there yeah yeah for me the the opportunity was really to uh, bring as we were saying so uh, people really want to start becoming a little bit more of a connoisseur, right? And learn how to taste. And we, we see that in wine so much as we were saying and in coffee. So it's more, how could we bring that to chocolate? And how could we also um, offer, uh, let's say, really a tasting adventure? So for us, uh, was more not giving you the chocolate you already know, the like milk chocolate with almonds, you know, that it's your favorite yogurt was fine, but it was more inviting people to taste something new and see if they like it, right? And in our case, inspired by traveling somewhere around the, around the world and that food culture. But uh, for us, knowing how to combine best different ingredients to really create those kind of, wow, flavor explosions to say, well, I never thought that I would like this, but I do, right? Yeah. I think one aspect as well in, in comparing it was uh, in, in wine, of course, you have sommeliers and you have people who know their wine very well. And then similar stories happened over coffee and over beer over the last years and uh, decades as well. It was, if you think about it 30 years ago, everybody was still having in the office or at home filter coffee. And now all of a sudden, or not all of a sudden, it was quite a journey. Um, people are really basically baristas at home, right? And mm. they all have their big machines and they know at what pressure and what temperatures and what fineness of the coffee ground they need to use. And similar on beer. And there are so many new microbreweries right now. And there are so many people who, in a positive way, geek out on coffee and on beer and obviously on wine. And on chocolate, it's growing and growing more and more. And um, yeah, and we think we can share this as well. And there is such a such a nice opportunity because people kind of want to geek out on chocolate as well and want to know more about it and want to learn more about it. Let's talk about production. I loved the story when you told me how you got into, I think it was Switzerland. Was it Switzerland? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How did you get into a producer or in, into a factory into Switzerland and they're producing the chocolate for you? 
It started with uh, contacts and networks we had from working again with, with giants in, in, in the chocolate manufacturing business. But uh, through there, we got switched some very small uh, producers located in Switzerland. So we started discussions with them. Um, uh, I think it was it was you know really interesting business discussions when you also come from we are so small and have all these crazy ideas of combining ingredients, but finding uh, people who are so experts as well with so many years of expertise in the chocolate business from different angles. Um, but it was then until the time we went there. So Niklas and I traveled to Switzerland on our first let's say official business trip. And walking into this place, um, it was an office, beautiful surrounding by the Swiss mountains, but being there with one of the really best uh, small chocolate sources in the world who are sourcing from really hand selection of beans to make them the chocolate mass for us, which will then become our chocolate tablets. And sitting in this meeting room, uh, thinking we're talking about our business. Like we, we would have been in meetings like this many times for the other jobs we work on, right? Because big companies won't give you that fantastic opportunities. But being in that meeting saying, this is for our startup, I really wanted to cry of happiness. It was like, wow. I mean, it, it really could not have been better. Yeah, it was really inspiring to be there to discuss with the yeah, with these people as well, who shared such a big knowledge and also passion for it and a certain amount of craziness, let's be honest. And and to be there and talk and yeah, and just bounce off ideas as well. That was really amazing. And it is also saying, yeah, it's rather a small amounts of chocolate, still huge amounts of chocolate, but also comparable to what maybe the, the big producers are doing. But therefore, you really go here for, for quality instead of quantity and you really see it. It's really smaller batches or really hand selected quality. And that is just amazing. And that's really we went out of this uh, out of this trip and we said almost, yeah, we wanted to cry. I want to do this every day. She said, I want to do this every day for the rest of my life. And in the, in the end, yes, we've done this already, but really with a different angle because you are you're doing your own thing right now. And that was amazing. It was really good. It was really nice. Yeah. yeah, and then of course you have Swiss chocolate. That's great, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. How did you get this funded so that you can talk to one of the factories and they're producing your amazing chocolate? How did you get to that level? I think the funding was first of all credibility. So that was, I think, having it in in our background to know what we are talking about that massively helped. And in terms of funding, then further on it is. Um, so how invested are you, Cielo? And how invested are you, Nicholas? Okay, let's go ahead. It's our thing and let's go for it. So the funding currently comes from us and from our energy. And, and that's what it is. And I think in terms of funding, the starting point of getting this driven, that's not as much money actually uh, until you get to the idea and really crystallize it more. It's more uh, persistent kind of funding. I think it's really your own time and your energy you, you drive in. And willingness to to stay awake until three o'clock at night and still work on something after you've done your normal job right and yeah. then say all right but still feeling energized and that's so cool right to to still work and work but it isn't work and that's amazing sorry that was my funding story i don't know how yours was <laughs> i think you described it very well and of course if we think the we would love that you know these flies that with people that they love it as much as we do and then, uh, of course, we could scale up. And for that, we would uh, need definitely a different uh, scale of funding. Uh, today was more us saying, OK, do we really believe in this? Uh, then we go for it. And, and for us, it's worth it every minute just because we think there's something in there. And, and we know we're going to keep you know, pushing and thriving for it and sharing it um, so that we find that space in, let's say, in the chocolate market. And, and to just say in terms of it's not only about funding and if we talk about it funding, then it almost seems like, yes, it is an investment, right? And where's then your return on investment. But for me, what I realize over time is these opportunities to being here, right? Having, having the chat with you, um, that is almost 
already the part that comes out, which I've never experienced or expected, is, is having this discussion of going in discussion with other people and they're saying, what do you mean by you just made your own chocolate? Yeah, I made my own chocolate because that's that's what I love. And then I did it. Um, and and this almost opened so many doors in in further discussions. And that is that is great. And uh, that's super nice. So also these talks we have with other people, that is such a nice return already on whatever time and effort you put in there. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I brought this up because a lot of people think like, yeah, it's a startup and they, they built and, and cook, however you say that, the chocolate at home in their kitchen and kind of <clears throat> do that. You're already, when it comes to that, super professional and having a factory that's doing it in one of the most pre prestige countries when it comes to chocolate. So ju that's why it was for me as well important to highlight that. Because when you told me the story, I was like, oh, that's cool. There's really something in that. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we like it as well, of course. Yeah? <laughs> but, um, and that's also a very interesting aspect is over time, certain things become normality as well. Of course, yeah. we were freaking excited when we we're sitting there in the meeting in Switzerland and we still are. But then all of a sudden you start like, yeah, our chocolate is Swiss chocolate. It's all bio and it's... Uh, it's yeah. fair and we know where it's come from. That is that is amazing, right? And this that's just the normal you're then talking about. Yeah. But yeah, we it's... did start with trials in our kitchen, of course, you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of during COVID as well, a lot of um chocolatey hand fingers. Uh, yes. Yeah. Hand tempering, hand molding, mixing all sorts of different ingredients and making our own chocolates to, you know, just to try uh different recipes, etc. So it it started here, but for the first product we're already working with uh, manufacturers yeah. in Switzerland, indeed. Cool. Let's get to the last part of the podcast where I'm asking a couple of questions that are a little bit outside of what we discussed, or maybe they're connected. If you could work, and you can answer that either or or both together, if you could work with a project that's impacting every human being on Earth, what project would you choose to work with and why? I'm coming from a food area. And I think one, one thing I learned at the beginning, I think was the first sentence when I, when I learned something about food was you're at the right place because people will always eat. And I think therefore in what kind of it, yeah, I will never be out of job, right? Because there's always going to be food that people need. And, and that is still to this day within my mind. But I think one aspect to it is educating about this on food. Where does it come from? And um, also, what does it mean if you get your food at every point in time, right? Ultra fast delivery we're talking about, or we're talking about uh, the quality of food in general. And uh, again, there is not necessarily a, a black and white. There are way more nuances to it. So I think it's about educating where does your daily food come from and uh, and how do you prepare it and what does it mean and with this there comes so so much because it's impacting everyone uh, food is such a personal topic so i think it would really be uh, around where does it come from and how is it produced and what does it do to you uh, i think that is a is a topic super close yeah cielo how about you yeah, for me, I, I would actually link it to chocolate. So uh, chocolate starts from a cocoa pod or a cocoa bean uh, in uh, places where a lot of us who eat it today are not uh, seen, right? We are not there in in, in the farms as, I mean, as, as consumers, as when, when you choose the chocolate. So for me, it's really being close to the supply chain from the beginning till the end. And how can you teach that more to people? Uh, but also for us, ultimately, ultimately, it was so important to make sure we could make an impact there. Um, and uh, that's why we chose our chocolate to first be organic bio, so that was more the impact on the environment, but also so important is the people. Yeah, great. Next question. What advice would you give to a young innovator that's just getting started? You're already, let's say, two years at least ahead. Mine, mine would be uh, go for what sparks in you. So if if you love something and there's something that you you know you wake up in the morning and you think wow that gives me a smile, go for it. Uh, it's not gonna be easy, 
it could you know have a, a long way to get there but uh go for what's what's really you're passionate about for me it would be uh, literally do it tomorrow i'm thinking back and think why haven't i done it before right because it, it takes a lot of time and effort and everything but as i mentioned already it gives a lot of energy back and uh, you can do it at your own pace and the only person in between yeah, this is your own mind or your own thinking so uh, literally do it uh, do it as soon as you can and uh, and then this this very obvious thing fail fast and do your mistakes and that's it and uh, we we are maybe in the middle of a big mistake we just decided uh, yesterday but but you never know and uh, that's it so i think that is a great that's a great part yeah yeah beautiful where can people find you and how can people connect to you so uh i think the easiest is always through social media so we have an instagram account and you know we love to be close to people there we're happy to answer questions or you know get engaged so if you if you contact there uh us you will reach us um and then uh of course if you want to buy our products please go to our website yeah and i think an add-on to this one uh is so definitely every message you're receiving is still either written by me or by cielo there is no customer support team behind this or so <laughs> so it's literally the two of us uh, being sales being customer support and being um r d <laughs> that's how it works in the early beginning exactly it's great Cielo Niklas thank you very much for being in, a sh in the show on the show it's a pleasure thank you very much for having us well, well, it was awesome to have you I wish you all the luck for the future I think you have a beautiful product a tasty beautiful product and an amazing idea and I'm really eager to follow you along and support as much as I can 